I wrote. Yeah, we're getting some full on Terminator 2 shit going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and this, of course, ends with him throwing the 50-year-old woman off of his truck in a speedy turn or whatever and then driving away. Yeah. Yeah. While she yells at him, Tartan spelled backwards is Satan. That's what she said. It obviously isn't. What is you not, no, no, it's no. Matt Rat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at it right here. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we ignored all the warning signs. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's off today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? <laughs> Mormon movie man. Oh, we got a jingle now. Nice. And we're also excited to welcome back the editor of Skeptic Magazine, the project director for the Good Thinking Society, the host of Be Reasonable and doer of COVID, Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. Is this my first Mormon movie month? I believe it is. It is. It yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't recall seeing a lot of Mormonism on screen for you guys previously. So this was exciting to, to really get to grips with what's going on with the latter days. <laughs> yeah. And, and this was an interesting one because it was all about Mormon culture instead of Mormon religion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had to be the most American thing ever. So tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? So we watched Baptists at our barbecue. It's the tale of a fierce dispute between two rival factions and a love affair that blossoms across the divide, except the factions are Baptists and Mormons. And then the movie keeps forgetting that they're rivals half the time or or even to have anything actually happen in the entire movie. Yes. It's West Side complete absence of story is what this film is. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. It's a, it's a love story about a town that's divided between Baptist and Mormons and the love interests aren't even a Baptist and a fucking Mormon. They're on the same side. It's because like, it was very clearly originally they wrote it as like, oh, and she'll be a Baptist. And someone was like, well, I would never let my daughter marry a Baptist. Yes. They're like, no, good point. Good point. I think that's a minor detail. No one will, no right. one cares. Right. A love affair between the Capulets and the Capulets. And the fucking Capulets. Yeah. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well. If you spent years trying to drive guest masochist Michael Marshall to the brink of madness <laughs> with the worst <laughs> misinformation the world has to offer, only to find that a Mormon comedy does the trick far better, mm -hmm. you will love this movie. By the end of this movie, Marsh's notes are just curses to my name, <laughs> ancient <laughs> languages he didn't know he spoke. <laughs> oh, I was not happy. I was not happy remotely through this. It just, it makes so Ooh. little sense. It barely hangs together. Yeah, it's irritating. Well, and, and we should say, though, that this movie has been something of a white whale for us since we started Mormon Movie Month. Our listeners have constantly been telling us about it. We couldn't find it. If finding this movie was any more of a quest, it would have included a goddamn water dungeon. But finally, <laughs> Eli found it. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. It was worth the effort. <laughs> Every single second. And I know, by the way, which listener uploaded this. I don't know where you got the DVD. But we are very grateful for your service. We are very <laughs> grateful for your service. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go best worst divine intervention because <laughs> all the way through this movie, they've got kind of the tension between these two rival factions. And you think, how does God normally intervene in order to do something dramatic to, to change the direction of the story? Is it going to be a burning bush? Is he going to part a sea? Or is he going to have the characters think maybe they can hear something? Maybe. Come, is, can, you, can, you guys, can you hear that? All right. Did I have my earphones on too loud? And then when I took them out, I'm sort of getting a slight ringing. Or is this the <laughs> creator of the universe trying to alter the course of our lives? It's hard to tell which of the two it is. One of those two things. I See, I thought you were going to be jealous for God because it's a, it's a divine hum. And it was like <laughs> God kind of taking your thing, right? Like God's going, mm, mm. <laughs> So I'm going to go with best worst insult. Now, this is a, Ooh. yeah, right. Something of a theme on God awful movies. We've been dealing with this since the very beginning. They want to have insults in their movies, but no one can say anything remotely 
vulgar in a mm. Christian movie. And I feel like this movie runs up against that wall at a higher speed than anything <laughs> else we've ever seen. I'll save it for when we get to it, but it's amazing. <laughs> right, because Mormons are the prudes of the Christian world, right? Right, yes. They're looking at normal Christian films being like, I'm sorry, that has the D word in it? Uh, <laughs> no. My Dang. family will not be Come watching. on, that's a little racy. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah, Children exactly. are going to watch this. And I'm going to go with best worst movie slipping into dementia. Okay. This movie starts you can see it the movie loses track of what it's about like once or twice towards the beginning the way that grandma will like repeat a story and you'll be like huh maybe she thought she was telling it to someone else and by the end of the movie we are full on we found her in our backyard smeared in poop <laughs> yeah talking about how hitler's coming back to take all the cake and paper i mean it is full <laughs> no. it's a full loss of personhood by the end of this film that makes Ooh. so much sense because one of the things that irritated me throughout this is how short some of the scenes were like i timed some of the scenes there's scenes that are 25 seconds long and yeah. mean nothing to the plot. And that, that makes sense. And related no way to anything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that makes sense. They've just lost complete awareness of what's going on. And they're just sort of rambling about for a moment about that time they were in high school and played on the football team. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was I yeah. saying? Anyway, about dogs. It's like, you weren't talking about dogs. What are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like having a being told a story by the memento guy. <laughs> All right, well, we, we've kept you waiting for this one for years, so another minute or two isn't going to hurt, but we're back in a flash with all the banality that is Baptists at our barbecue. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay, there's an animated film. God, I want to do that, but, but then there's these two mission films. Man, we're running out of time. July's almost over. Eli, what, what's the matter, man? Yeah, what's wrong? It's these Mormon movies, you guys. We went a whole year without Mormon movie month, and now I'm overloaded with choices as to what to do next. We had ones like Today's, which people have been requesting for years, but I also just found a Mormon Netflix, and it has hundreds of options on it. Well, sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear, Eli. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationship, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Wait, wait, wait. You guys are saying that therapy isn't just for when I'm in distress? Like, it can help me with big life decisions and stuff, too? It sure can. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So no awkward therapist breakups? No awkward therapist breakups. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Thanks, guys. I think I know what I want to do now. What's that? We need to start a new podcast that only does Mormon films. You know, Eli, I would literally die. Uh, it's true. He will. He will. That's true. Fair. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's meeting for Baptists at our barbecue. This movie is, of course, based on the beloved novel of the same name. But we're going to fill this bad boy up with all sorts of quirky Mormon humor. Heck, yeah, we are. Steve, language. Sorry. So, so yeah, what do you guys think? What are some fun Mormon qualities we could poke fun at? Oh, oh, our parents sure do want us to get married. <laughs> they sure do indeed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next. Uh, what about how hard it is to get, uh, like, support from back in Utah? Right? <laughs> I, 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 that's a little dicey, but I get it. I think we can all understand those words. Those are pretty universal. Um, this is all great stuff. Anything else? Oh, um, pedophilia. I'm sorry, what? Well, the sanctioning of pedophilia. You know, from our foundations all the way up to modern day, we have a pretty serious problem with marrying children to adults. There's got to be some great jokes about that, surely. Come on. I, I, I don't think pedophilia, uh, let alone the church's relationship to it, is, um, you know, fun. Yeah? Yeah, dude. Well, what if they're all 18? Can we do pedophilia, but they're all legally 18? 
Okay, that's hilarious now. Oh my gosh, there is nothing funnier. <laughs> we marry children. We, we marry children. Sure do. Yep. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up with a couple of quotes. The first one from Yale theologian Harold Bloom it says, The most significant development of 21st century American religion will be the relationship between Mormons and Baptists. And uh, yeah, checked out the source for this quote. Not complimentary to either Mormons or Baptists. No, This would no. be like if you began a documentary about uh, fucking rattlesnakes with some guy being like, God, oh, fuck, rattlesnakes are so deadly. You have no <laughs> idea how dangerous <laughs> rattlesnakes are. I will dedicate most of my life, career, and media appearances to warning the American populace about rattlesnakes. Right. I did not look this quote up. I just took it at face value to what they were trying to say, which was like, Mormons and Baptists are incredibly powerful. And it's like, yeah, I mean, isn't that like a decent chunk of the GOP's power base? They're mm -hmm. not wrong about that. Between Mormons and Baptists, you don't have the Supreme Court you have now, for example. Right. The thing is, is that this guy, Harold Bloom, is like the most famous literary critic in American history. Introducing uh -huh. him as Yale theologian would be like introducing Kurt Warner as two-time Hy-Vee stock boy of the month. <laughs> All yeah, right. The, the guy who wrote On the Creation of This Human Being, the definitive text on Shakespeare's works is a famous theologian. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also did that on the side. In that he sometimes talked about religion. <laughs> And who said, like, he he was an atheist, too. Like, I, I, like well, I, or I guess one time he said he wasn't an atheist because that's no fun or something like that. But his wife was like, he's a fucking atheist. Yeah. He's a fucking yeah, yes. right. atheist. The minute he died, his wife was like, hey, a bunch of you have been using my husband's quotes, and I just want you to know he fucking hated you. He hated you all <laughs> so much. So anyway, so we get that quote. And then we we show this this guy sitting up out of the out of a mud hole. He's all covered in mud. And the narrator's like, I bet you're wondering how I got into the, this wacky circumstance. Huh? And we we weren't. We were absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. No. We weren't, and yet it'll still disappoint us. Somehow. He's like horribly covered in mud and it looks kind of yucky. And he's like, I bet you wondered how I got here. And I wrote, No, but I did wonder how I got here watching you get there. <laughs> what went wrong in my life to a point where right. this is where I'm at? <laughs> yeah. I think maybe you would have turned off Penn and Teller's bullshit if you knew that down that long and winding road. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so but we, we so we flash back. He's going to tell the story of how he got muddy that one time, and we flash back to him running through the woods. He's in a park ranger's outfit. He can hear a woman screaming for help, so he's rushing through the woods to rescue her. So, but he comes across this woman. Now she's unconscious, which makes the screaming really weird. I'm really wondering <laughs> how that happened. She's under. She's a number of logs have been neatly, gently stacked over top of her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulls him off. He picks her up and he goes, uh, ma'am, ma'am, are you OK? And she says, surprise, happy birthday and hands him a present. Yes. Now, I, I looked up in the credits. This lady is, is listed as date napping woman. Oh, really? Like, is, is, is date napping a thing? I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know that date napping is a thing. But that was that was where I started to look in the credits. But when I looked in the credits, I also looked up this actor and I thought, I've never heard this guy. I looked up this film on IMDb. INDB lists the top 18 cast members of this film and he's not one of them. He's not, no. he's not listed as top mm -mm. cast. No. You've got to click through to full cast and he's 19th on the list of people who did this film and he's very much the main actor. <laughs> Feel like this actor requested that. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he might be below, below the fold on IMDB, Yeah, he's on the please. second page of Google, please. Yeah. You know what people don't do enough is alphabetical by the third letter in the name. Am I right? <laughs> huh? You know how that was that ruling of the right to be be forgotten, where you can right, record a course yeah. and have your name mm -hmm. expunged from Google. Do you think he's done that on IMDb? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now, but but what's going on here? This is so fucking weird. What's apparently going on here is that this character, he's turning 29 and he's single, so his mom is trying to set him up on a date by having a woman go into the woods, lay down, put a bunch of logs over top of herself and scream, help me, until he shows up. Yeah. Really wanted a flash cut to like all the other people who's tried to rescue her first. And she was like, no, I'm doing a meat cute thing. <laughs> <laughs> doing a meat cute. And what we see here, and it's 
super unclear, but I, like in retrospect, you can see what they're going for. Is as he's talking to his mom, he's looking through this magazine and he sees a help wanted sign like for a park ranger in a different town further away from his mom. And he draws a big circle around it. Right. Yes. Yeah, but what he doesn't know is that he's actually going to get to be a park ranger slash cop slash deacon. So, yes, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's one of those real multi hyphenate positions. A lot of hats in this show. If you just take this at face value and you're not, before you get cued into where the rest of the film's going, he's on the phone to his mom looking for a job application to be a park ranger while dressed as a park ranger. So I thought, was he not a park ranger? Because he is dressed as a park ranger. Or was that just part of his elaborate sex game? Is that he'll right. run through the woods dressed <laughs> as a park ranger to rescue this girl before they have their hot savior sex? Right. Well, because, yeah, because we don't know where he is. We don't know that this is further away. And mom's on the phone, so we don't even know where mom is. No. So anyway, so we see him driving to work. He's narrating. To, oh, actually, first, so we have to meet the love interest. This is uh, Charity. We're going to meet her huffily walking up a set of spiral stairs. Mm, yeah, she's trying to storm up the spiral yes. staircase in like a huff or, or in sadness. And you, you can't storm up the spiral staircase. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> it's just impossible. <laughs> This, this is also the first shot we get of her, and it's very porny and beginning mm -hmm. of a romantic comedy i I'll spoil it for the listeners. She will never be shot in anything except slow motion meet cute. Pretty much. So yeah, it's weird how comfortable I was at, with this shooting at the beginning and how uncomfortable I am at the end and like want to write down the cameraman's name in case she ever <laughs> goes missing. <laughs> so we cut back to our narrator, He's driving to work one day and he says in his narration, he's like, you know, there are few things more painful than turning 29 and still being a single Mormon. And I bring that line up because if you're ever asked to define privilege, that sentence would be happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> he also clarifies to us that he's not gay. Yes, right, yes, he does weird. do that. I, I've, I've not found the right woman. Although I am into women, I'm definitely I, I into like women. women. I have to women, make that clear women. at this point. It's in my contract that I say this early on. Yeah, right. And of course, he's as he's uh, since he's sitting at this uh, stop sign and he's watching like families with an irresponsibly large number of children drive by and getting super jealous. Well, he's just seen like yeah, so many different families going by, and I think it's because this movie didn't realize at a crossroads in life is a metaphor. I think they thought it's like a <laughs> geographical location with like with like a little symbol on the Ordnance right. Survey map. Here is the crossroads of life that you go to uh, to com contemplate your current, <laughs> current situation. And then we, we cut back to Charity. She's back in Arizona. She's packing all her boyfriend's shit so she can throw it at him when he comes to try to apologize for whatever he's done, right? Look, all credit to this actress because she has to do a lot of work in this movie with not a lot to work with. But this opening scene, she might as well just be going sad, 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 sad. Yeah. Sad, sad. <laughs> she doesn't get better as we go. No, she absolutely doesn't. No one in all of human history has had less facial expression range than this lady. <laughs> Everything she does has exactly the same. From about like the eyebrows down, nothing ever changes for her at any point. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like you ever go to the dentist and you're like, oh, will I be able to talk by this time? And the dentist is like, sure. <laughs> and then you get to that time and you're like, in the film. That, it's, that's what she did with her Botox injector. She was like, sure. and I'll be able to act by this afternoon, right? And they were like, for sure. So, okay. So then we get the main character. We haven't mentioned this yet. The main character's name is Tartan. And they hang a lampshade on it because they have lots of characters say to him, that's a stupid name. But like... It is a stupid name because it isn't a name. No one in all of history has ever been called Tartan. This is just a ludicrous plot point that you've decided to introduce for no reason. Right. Like, why is he called Tartan? It's insane. It's this weird form of masochism that Mormons have where they'll be like, we're actually pretty self-aware of this thing that everyone thinks is weird about us. And you're like, oh, cool. So do you like take action to change it? And they're like, no, we just like want you to know. And we're like, oh. <laughs> yes, right, right. <laughs> It's bad on purpose. <laughs> right. No, it's like the way they embraced the musical. And we're like, yeah, but you, you realize that that just like it's all about how you guys are a bunch of fucking about you. lying bastards who steal shit from third world countries and stuff. And they're like, yeah, it's just that wacky ass. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fuck frog or sorry, an F frog. And it's like, yeah. OK, <laughs> it's about AIDS. You made AIDS worse. We made AIDS worse. Stop. Just we did. The <laughs> 
<laughs> Someone told you that if you just agree with bullies, they'll stop. But I'm not. St- I have a whole career based on this. <laughs> multiple podcasts for this whole month dedicated to it. So, yeah. So but Tartan gets home to his mom's house where he apparently lives. And she set up a surprise party with some different chick she wants to set him up with. Ooh. Yeah, and this is where she has like a catalogue of different temples as well. And she's clearly trying to use the word temples as like an analogy for women because mm-hmm. she's saying like, oh, look at all these different temples. You've got to make sure you choose the right one. There's so many beautiful... But then the analogy sort of starts to go astray because she says, because some of them are so boxy. And it's like, Mum, you've got way too intimate a knowledge of these women that you're trying to set him up with. <laughs> and then she says, and some of the, a couple of them don't even have Angel Moroni on top. And I thought, okay, she's moved off the analogy. Unless... Whenever you see a statue of Angel Moroni, he's always very conspicuously blowing a horn. Oh. And so maybe mom's just like looking out like, you know, some of these right. women, they, uh, they don't have a, a statue of the Angel Moroni, if you know what I'm if saying. You know, they don't if you know that. what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe those churches let you go in the back door sometimes. So you, know, you got to figure out what you want in a church <laughs> and look for the little Moroni in the boat so that the church is still excited for you to marry him. Yeah, some of those churches have got nose piercings, and uh, yeah, you want to you want to have a little bit of uh, a little time in those churches. Maybe not don't live there, but you want to spend a little time. There. Definitely visit those churches. Visit those. Ch- yeah, you're gonna want to get. You're gonna catch something in those churches. <laughs> <laughs> the holy fire. Um. Yeah. So. So so we get Charity Pack in her suitcase. She's leaving. We get Tartan. He's now going to transfer to be a park ranger somewhere out of state. Mom's very sad that he's leaving. He's 29. <laughs> yeah he's like anyways that was it I had to move out of my mom's house and I'm like no you had to move out of your mom's house significantly before then right but- <laughs> yeah yeah like eight years ago minimum yeah so so he leaves we get the credits we get the him driving through Utah credits my music note here is this song seems like the singer should hit the wrong chord apologize to me and start that stanza over at some point you know oh yeah 100% they got this song from the bin out back of the studio where they filmed Scrubs where they yes, went through very, and was like, no I don't want this the lyrics are so boring that they include have you seen my front lawn it's a work of art that's where they go. that's the, the what they consider to be the the aspirations the lofty artistic aspirations of this this opening track mm-hmm so yeah, so now I guess Tartan had to head to the police department to get his job stuff or something. I don't know. You know what they say, park rangers always getting their housing and assignments from the local sheriff. That's exactly, <laughs> yeah. So he goes to the police department. This is where we're going to meet Bob the cop. So he, he goes to walk in. Bob the cop walks out and he's like, oh no, we don't have an interior shot in here. There's not enough room. We're going to have to do this exterior. It's so <laughs> this I, I was like, is this actor on some kind of timer that he needs to get this scene over with? Oh yeah, he was he was whipping through this. The other thing that was interesting is as as Tartan pulls up, the route to the front of the police station is marked out with cones, but like across the main road. So mm-hmm. there's nowhere for Tartan to go but to drive at the police station. And it's like, has this cop set up like a Mormon trap out of cones? He's caught himself <laughs> a Mormon. Because then the cop immediately comes out and starts picking the cones back up. He's like, well, I won't need yeah. these anymore. I've caught my Mormon. Also, there's just, sorry, one just stupid moment here. As he's picking the cones up, he's handing them to Tartan. And Tartan's too fucking stupid to just start stacking them inside one another. (laughs) Yes, yes. Right, because we're supposed to have this whole he's got too many things in his hands moment, right? But to be handed another thing. But they're cones. They just stack. They do stack, yeah. You're a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, and, and but Bob explains that yeah, your mom called me beforehand, so I know all about your backstory, and also I guess your job comes with a house. Yeah. So Marsh will point this out about eight hundred times throughout <laughs> the notes, but nothing happens in this movie, but it happens very fast. <laughs> and one of the ways that nothing will happen very fast in this movie is that Bob's character is he's already heard about it. So where characters would usually convey information to other ones, the writers of this movie solved it by Bob just showing up every second and going, I've already heard the plot so far. No need to repeat yourself. Please move yes, forward. Right. <laughs> well, and then, of course, Bob is also there to speed exposit whenever necessary, too. Right. Which is what he does here. He says, you see, the thing about this town is that the Mormons and the Baptists are like enemies in a feudless feud. And they're exactly evenly numbered. There's 262 Mormons in town and 262 Baptists. 
so yes, there there are, which which are they seem that's a weirdly specific number. Like that's that's unsustainable to keep at that level. There's no way that that's going to remain at two six two. You would think people are going to die, people are going to have kids. But I thought, well, even then. The fact that it's tied doesn't really mean anything because it's not like the town is voting on everything that's going to happen. Right. So the fact that they're at, they're mildly outnumbered does not matter in the slightest, really. That's the entire conflict of this, but it does not matter. Yeah, it's deeply confusing. Well, especially because they also don't do anything related to the rivalry at any point, right? Yeah, they just don't particularly care for each other. <laughs> yeah, just in general. So yeah, so Tartan goes to get gas. This is where we're going to meet Willie, the gas station attendant. Willie has de- decided, this actor for some reason has decided to play the character of Willie as able to see a swarm of insects visible only to himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it was a call forward. I mean, I don't want to spoil the end of the movie, but I think this character saw where his character ends and he was like, I will give this character the mind. Of a child. Oh, interesting. Yes. interesting. No, that makes sense. That does make sense. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and then, of course, he gets it. He goes in and the guy's like, I heard you were a Mormon. And, and Bob came in and did a bunch of expositing earlier. So you don't have to introduce yourself to me. I already know you. And he's like, oh, that's convenient for the movie to, to keep moving <laughs> along. Yeah. But he's like, but don't worry. I've got a great bit. I will do it three full times in the movie. I sell slushies out of my corner at the front of this gas station and I wipe it flat with my finger. And then lick my finger in case it's not gross enough just to have my finger in your drink. Yeah. Get it? Yes. It's humor. E- even the way that that bit of conversation starts is ridiculous because because he says to Tartan, cold slush, and Tartan says, actually, my name's Tartan. It's like he he wasn't asking if your name was slush and whether you were cold. He was offering you a cold slush. Actually, <laughs> right. the, actually yes. my name's Tartan makes no sense in that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so let me be clear to the listeners too. This is two different. Eli's moved on to a different character. So Willie, the gas station attendant, is one character. The old guy selling slushies is a different character as well. Yeah, we, I don't think we get his name. I'm, I'm not sure we do. Correct. No, he's just slushy guy. He's going to play very important roles throughout the film. So and and across the street from them at that moment, Bob is evicting a character that I only have down as shitter guy. I never got his name. <laughs> sure. Because he's always being dragged out of bathrooms. And that's how we meet him now. He's being dragged out of the library bathroom. Yes, because he's being told that the library bathroom is not a weight loss asylum, which is true because nowhere is a weight loss asylum. That is not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so what's so funny about this is that this is so clearly some bullshit Mormon compromise because the character was written as Eli, right? He's always in the bathroom. But then they were like, no, we can't have poop related jokes in it. So they rewrote it as he's always in the bathroom because that's how he's going to lose weight is by locking himself in bathrooms where there's nothing to eat. Yeah. And let me clarify that locking yourself into bathrooms for extended period of time does not help you lose weight. Trust me, if it was, I would be thin as a whip. I promise you. <laughs> but it's it's so weird. This is such a weird thing. Even this bit of this scene is so weird because they explain that he's locked himself in the library bathroom for too long. And so if you're thinking, well, what would be too long to lock yourself in the library bathroom? You're thinking that's a matter of hours. No, he's locked himself in there for two days to lose weight. That's what the librarian <laughs> says. Yes, yeah. two fucking days. So like on day one, he goes into the library in the morning. He's there the entirety of the day. And the librarian's like, <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he's fine. It's only once we get towards like afternoon the second day, we should probably start checking right. on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and we don't know. Like, I mean, you know, was he there overnight? Did she just leave him there? She's like, yeah, probably. It's probably a difficult shit. He'll be by the morning. He'll be fine. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but, the, but, but Bob is dragging him out. The librarian's yelling at him. And the cop says, Bob, the cop says, hey, Willie, the gas station attendant, come over here and help me. And Shitter guy's like, no, I'm Mormon and he's Baptist and we hate each other. And Willie the Baptist says, yeah, well, you're a big human. And 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 then they get into a fight. Then they have a wrestle. Yeah, the, the exchange is, I don't want help. To which Willie says, good, because you're too big to help. I have no idea what that could mean. How, how is he too big to... I don't know what that means at all. They yeah, don't know yeah. how to write dialogue. They don't know how to write conversation. And they certainly don't know how to write insults. But believe it or not, no. that is not by any means the worst insult we get in this film. No, <laughs> so, no. Close. It'll be the closest to the best, honestly. <laughs> yeah, really. So Shitter Guy runs across the street and he like bear hugs Willie and tackles. And Willie is one third this man's size. 
And and everybody's just like, oh, there's them Baptists and Mormons going at it with physical violence again. So wacky. Classic feud, just like Yale theologian Harold <laughs> Bloom <laughs> predicted. <laughs> I don't know why, but I pictured Harold Bloom on the set somehow at this point being like, please don't use my words at the beginning of this. I beg of you. So the library, while they're fighting, the librarian comes up and introduces herself to Tartan. Apparently, she knows all about him, too, and has picked out a couple of books for him. She's like, I, I have your new library card, and here's your first two books. Uh, one is How Not to Fuck, and the other is How to Not Have a Dad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so we don't know her name. She is wearing a name badge and it does have like I-M-L-D-S-R-U on it, which took me a moment to figure out that was like a I'm Mormon, are you? Because mm -hmm. I thought that was her name. And I thought it was like pronounced like Imeldesru. Because I thought that's not a stupider name than Tartan. So it's no, totally it's not honestly. This film that she's Imelda's room. But the standards of this. Film. Why did you think they thought Cold Slush was a real name? They're walking around with <laughs> right, Imelda's yes. and Tartan. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so Tartan gets to his city-provided apartment, apparently, does not much care for the decor in there. Ah. And then we have a shot where he is, I shit you not, eating frozen peas out of a bag. What? Mm. That's that's the most Mormon thing. That's the tasteless, <laughs> blandest thing one can do. I had to look up, do Mormon people eat frozen peas? No, I didn't. Mean, it's just it's a bit for the film. Whenever I see a weird behavior that isn't poison, I do have to be like, okay, that could be a Mormon. It, it could be yeah, a no, you did. Yeah, right. No, the lessons we've learned from Mormon movie months. <laughs> so, but just then, just as he's eating his frozen peas, the drunken guy who used to have the, his park ranger job before he got it and got fired for I guess, being drunk on, on the job. Oh, that's why he doesn't like him. He's the former park ranger. Yes. I, that, yes. That's only just clicked for me now. That's only just clicked. <laughs> you, you, you have to do some sleuthing to figure out the plot of this fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I really want to live in Marsh's universe where he was like, yeah, and then this guy shows up for no fucking reason <laughs> and for the entire movie is just like, fuck you. I'm your enemy now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but this was Rich. Rich comes stumbling drunkenly out of the woods, yells at him for taking his germ, and then throws rocks at him. Mm. And calls him Mormon. He just keeps shouting Mormon at him as an insult, which in fairness, it is an insult. It's no, an right, insult. it is. It's definitely it is. an insult for sure. Now, but we have to prove over and over again that Rich isn't a real man like Tartan is. So he throws rocks at him. Tartan starts to walk towards him with a chair and he runs off yelling, Mormon, you Mormon, you Mormon, you Mormon, and you Mormon, you Mormon. <laughs> Rich will go, will violently switch between like villain in a like 80s drama to raccoon, but never <laughs> anything in between, right? He will either be like, I'm here to kill your wife because I can't ever, or He'll like bang trash can lids together and Rich will like do a little scoot out of the yes, way. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll have slightly toxic shit, like overly toxic shit. That's the other thing he'll do. Yeah. So, okay. So the next morning, I guess that was Saturday, is Sunday morning. He's heading to a fucking Mormon church in his stupid Mormon reservoir dogs outfit or whatever. But on his way to his truck, he hears this weird tapping sound in the woods. Is it a tapping sound or is, is someone playing squash? There's okay, a, sure. It's, it's the sound of a squash ball being hit against a racket and a wall for some reason in the middle of the woods. Right. And of course, if you hear a weird sound in the woods, you go and you check it out, you know, in your nice Sunday clothes. Uh, uh, so, so that's what he does. He comes across the house. He's like, well, let me just wander into this and see if anyone owns it or if this is just some fucking naturally occurring house. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, like park rangers are wont to do. I guess, yeah. But just as he walks in, a dude walks in behind him and he's like, hey, man, um, you just walked into my house. Why? Yeah, and his response is, oh, I didn't know if anyone lived here, despite it being a very clearly, it's, it's full of food. It's like the TV right. is basically left on. It's like, <laughs> he might as well left a note on the door saying, just popped out for milk, I'll be right back. It's like, oh, it could have been anything. There's no, right. no, no clue. Yeah. There's a box of fucking tricks in the fucking background. Yes, it's occupied, man. <laughs> also, 
even if no one did live there. You can't just walk into random buildings. <laughs> it's still not <laughs> yours. I wasn't sure if anyone lived here. Is that how you determine vacancy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and so, but the guy's like, hey, I have a spare sandwich in my hand right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was almost my favorite best worst because... This actor, the main guy, 19th in, in the IMDb position, is such a bad actor that he fails to portray yucky. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. he does a, like, mm, and I'm like, oh, so the sandwich was good. And then he spits it out, and I was like, oh, no. He was trying to do a yucky, mm, mm. But he's so <laughs> bad that it actually, yeah, right. I, I thought the same fucking thing. I was like, oh, is the sandwich really good or mm. bad or what? And, and he's like, oh, I need water. And the guy's like, I don't have running water, but I have this canteen. And he's like, yeah, okay. And he drinks it. And it's vodka because, you know, that guy's not Mormon. He doesn't know. That's what a secular huh? people do, right? We put vodka in our canteens. But even the way he introduces that is so weird. He says, because, you know, once a month, I like to put vodka in my canteen just to keep it interesting. Is that a monthly basis? Full canteen of vodka is how you keep your life interesting. The rest yeah. of the time it's water, but just like it's not even like someone else is filling it at random for him and he doesn't know when it's going to come. He just right. pours the vodka yeah, in himself. Right. Is like, yeah, well, exactly. there's my interest done for the next 30 days. <laughs> wow. I can't help but notice you make fun of that while well, Heath's not on the show, Mark. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, come on. Heath's more than 30 days. He's, he's more than every 30 <laughs> exactly. days. That's fair. Exactly. That's fair. And it's All not 30 days. Heath puts water in one day a month. <laughs> yeah. That's how he. <laughs> keeps things mixed. So yeah, so but but he's he's Mormon, so he doesn't drink, so he doesn't know how to drink, so he vomits uh, violently all over the place in this guy's house that he just walked in. Vomits all over his tie. The guy turns to him, looks at the vomit, and goes, "I wish I had a dog." Yes, Ugh. I wrote in my notes, horrifying, truly, <laughs> truly horrifying. Yeah, utterly horrible. So, okay, so he shows up at Mormon Church, but church has been canceled, apparently, because the librarian and her husband are mean and nasty and didn't want everybody to sing hymns, so they kicked him out. Uh, so we should explain that in this movie, the, the Mormon Church is just somebody's house because the Mormon Church, which is hoarding over $100 billion, won't just, like, actually build a church. They keep holding services in just the person who has the biggest house's house. Yeah. yeah. Right. And this is where he says to the librarian, I didn't know that you were the, the wife of the, of the preacher. And she says, well, you know, I'm too modest to talk about it. But you're too modest to not talk about what someone else has achieved. That's not modesty. Yeah, that's, that you're, yeah. <laughs> you didn't do that. Yep, sure can. So, yeah, so they go to some other chick's house, right? So we, we, we cut over to like 60 fucking people packed into my living room right, or something, right? Yeah, although there's meant to be 262 Mormons in this congregation, so I don't know where the other 200 are yeah, or whether right. we're supposed to infer that all 262 are packed into this house. Just like there's some in the kitchen. There's right, the yeah, we don't know. Toilet, there's like 30 the other Mormons rooms, in it. Yeah. Yeah. They're nested inside each other. You have to peel them open. <laughs> oh, to see yeah, them. Yeah, no, yeah, you got to make the most of the space, yeah. And we learned the source of this feud. Don't worry, it'll never matter. The source of this feud within the Mormon church is that the wind scoop lady doesn't want to sing hymns because Baptists sing hymns. Yes. And I can't both. I don't know if you guys did this, but I was like, ooh, 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 please tell me this is a real Mormon controversy. Please tell me this is a more real Mormon controversy. I wrote, should Mormons? And Google was like, sing hymns. <laughs> and found many a violently passionate message board on the LDS website. Uh, Let me tell you. Right. I, I wrote the question in my notes, but I was not interested enough to Google it. <laughs> I, I didn't move to a second web browser right, to put the right. same question oh, in fair. and find the answer. That's how boring. Marshall will be like, so I looked up this doctor's high school <laughs> yeah, exactly. record and I, I read his thesis paper and in this movie he was like, I don't know who that fucking character is. I'm going to call it a spooky. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is where we have possibly the most shocking moment in the movie, right? So they're all sitting around in this woman's living room and this chick walks up to Tartan and she says, hey, I hear you're single. And he's like, yeah. She's like, that's my daughter over there. She points to the fucking girl from the Wendy's sign, right? She's like, that's my daughter over there. She's 18 and she's never had a penis inside her before. Yes. At which point I wrote in my notes, this is a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Even then, she describes that as uh, she's never had sex. So, you know, that's a priceless bonus. Yes. Oh, God, you're totally, you're, you're, your child's virginity is a bonus. Oh, God, oh it's horrible. Oh, my God. 
a bonus for someone else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he goes, well, you know, it's, it's a shame because she's 18. I'm too old. I'm 29. And the woman says, and I fucking quote, oh, her granddad was 62 and he married a 17 year old. You're not too old. Yeah. How is How did the Mormons make this? The movie is like, Wackity, schmackity, <laughs> yeah. And I wrote in my notes, March for the record, as a British person, that's bad. I just, I, I didn't understand. Hey, I didn't know my wife kids, is uh, older than me, damn it. My wife is older than me. <laughs> no, just I, I didn't want to do cultural lines and <laughs> yeah, right, right. confusion there. But no, like the 62-year-old marrying a 17-year-old, she wasn't too young for him. You just apply the formula. You know, what is it? Um, a fifth of your age plus five. So she was yeah, well for Mormons. Right. No, that is the Mormon uh, formula, yeah. Wow, really taking a lot of shots at Heath on this episode. <laughs> no, I okay. did not know <laughs> okay. Marsh was going to come for you like this, okay? I, I always am. Okay, so and then Tartan goes upstairs and damn if the old guy whose house they are at didn't die. Don't worry, though, he's old, so his death is funny. No one cares. The no, 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 amount no. that no one cares about this guy's death is like Wikipedia article simulating. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they call Bob the cop and they, they have this whole wacky bit where they're like him and Tartner trying to carry the dead guy out and they can't really do it. But they can't do the bit because it's a human being. It's an elderly human being that they're carrying around, right? So they're being yeah. like... Right, so they don't drop him. Right, they're they just kind of let him sag. <laughs> yeah, they, they do handle his supposed cops. It's it's all the subtlety of like some tea drinking chimps. These are the PG chimps from the <laughs> adverts, right. you know, trying to get the piano down the stairs. Yeah. Also, the pretty girl will be shot in slow motion. She walks up and she's like, "Oh, is that a dead guy?" And he's like, "Yeah, it is." And I really wanted his boner to start to like push the old guy <laughs> oh, <Jesus laughs> Christ. while he's talking to her. It's just like he's tilting. Oh, it's because of the. Uh, Oxygen. <laughs> He's moving. But it's like it's like a wacky meat cube. Like, oh, don't you hate it when you you know the girl that you like shows up right when you've got a handful of dead guy? Like that's how the movie plays that. Yeah, I mean, but luckily for Tartan, recently discovered a corpse just happened to be this girl's type. So he's, he's just fallen face first into a perfect, uh, perfect situation there. She really Clearly. goes for the has recently discovered a corpse look. Right. Yeah. So the next day we've got Tartan in the library. The librarian lady is like her her whole personality, her whole character now is mad at the Mormon church because of the hymn thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, she says uh, that she's going to quit their version of the church and her and her husband are going to practice a pure form of Mormonism, by which I assume she means her husband wants to fuck a 14-year-old. I think yeah, that's probably, what she means. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. He heard there's a new virgin 18-year-old around. <laughs> yeah, and he's, right. Uh, yeah. All right, so then we cut to... Tartan picking up a beagle. Remember when the guy said he wished he had a dog to eat the vomit? Tartan's buying him a dog now. Yep. Yeah, from a lady that I think is an alien porn star from what we can see of her. <laughs> She's alien porn star in the rest of my notes. Yes. Here's what happened that I think is weird, right? Because this actress, lovely, very attractive. And they were like, why wouldn't Tartan fuck her? And they're like, oh, right. We need to dress her like a slut. And then they yes. were like, we don't, we can't do that. People will jerk off to our movie. And they were like, okay, <laughs> okay, cool. We need to dress her like Fran Drescher in The Nanny. And they were like, okay, that, that we could do. Close enough. And we'll never acknowledge why. Now we have to point out here that this movie does not, like it's the whole Mormons versus Baptist, but it's very like Mormon, it's a Mormon movie, right? This isn't Baptist movie month. They go all, they basically present Baptists as like having horns and laying eggs. And and yeah. part of it is supposed to, but part of the contrast is supposed to be that this is the kind of hussy that Baptist girls grow up to be, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of this character. Bunch of dog groomers. <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, so he takes the beagle to the guy, the, the guy who gave him the sandwich. And we should point out that this character is a Lamanite, right? He is a uh, yep. Native American. I f There's a cut scene, right? There's absolutely a cut scene somewhere. Now, I'm not saying it maybe we got filmed, but somewhere on this scriptwriter's floor was like, you know, you people are actually mentioned in the book. Of yeah, Mormon. right, right. No, when, when he's talking to the old guy at the barbecue later, I was expecting the guy to ask him why he wasn't more delightsome. Never did. 
So, okay, so then we cut to Hebrew's funeral, and it's awkward, too, because they can't get the coffin through the door. They get they get a lot out of the carrying a dead guy gags in this movie. Sure do. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're just inelegantly bashing the coffin against the entrance of the door like a Mormon man on his wedding night. That's how inelegant <laughs> this is. <laughs> so... Yeah, so so they're hanging out in the funeral. The beagle hussy Baptist chick is flirting with Tartan, but he's interested in charity, so he hands her off to the Lamanite. They will be love interests now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he goes over to charity, and he's like, hi, I'm Tartan. I'm going to stare at you for so long that it'll be really obvious that I'm picturing inserting my penis into your mouth. <laughs> hope that does. I hope that's not awkward. She's like, it's not, apparently. I'm going to be okay with you just staring longingly at my nose. Yeah, and she'd be like, that's fine as long as my mouth doesn't have to change from the expression that it's currently in because you cannot do that. So if you can work with this, I think we're fine. There you go. Oil can. <laughs> Oil can. Oh, okay, cool. And then he's like, do you want to go to lunch? And she says, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this because I think maybe I fell into some kind of heroin fugue state mm -hmm. while watching this movie. Does she say, I haven't met someone named Tartan, so yes. More or less. That is the reason yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> that is as much of a reason as she gives. So, okay. It's the next day. She's showing up at his place for lunch. He's not going to then take her to a restaurant like a normal sane person. They're going to eat sandwiches at his fucking house. It's so strange. It's the it's psychotic. <laughs> it's absolutely psychotic. If I invited Noah out for lunch and meant my house, he'd be like, yeah. Weird. That's this weird. weird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it was like, do you want to come around for lunch? I'm going to make X and you would quite like to have X. So I'll make X for you. Right. That wouldn't be too unreasonable. But she gets there and he he's like, well, I, I might be able to make a lasagna. He hasn't started making lasagna. He decides not to make lasagna. He has no idea what they're going to eat. Yeah. It's just come to my house, stranger. And she does. Yeah. Hadn't even really thought through what he was going to make. They end up having bags of chips and fucking wonder bread. <laughs> It's yeah. like th this is like if it, like this is if the scene was he's trying to run her off and make her think he's not interested. It makes sense. Yes. Yes. Also, he explains that he can't eat lasagna because his face gets covered in sauce. And she's like, yep, normal human thing to say about eating. Yep. Anyway, so I think but like I stopped and paused the movie and re-listened to that sentence because I was sure that the shrooms had taken hold and it was time to stop <laughs> watching the movie for the day. Right. I, I was thinking, like, is that a maybe I, a sloppy cunnilingus reference? I also type of thought thing, it so. was a sloppy <laughs> cunnilingus reference, right? But he didn't say if he had been like, sorry, I can't make his lasagna. When I eat lasagna, it gets all over my face. I would have been like, okay, team yeah, player. No, I, I get, get it. it. I get it. <laughs> he finds Moroni in the boat. Good for him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And also, by the way, while they're having their sandwiches out on this fucking porch or whatever, he keeps talking with his mouth full. God, yes. Not just full, but like he's worrying that someone's about to take one of his sandwiches full. He's like stuffed <laughs> food into each of his cheeks like a chipmunk carrying yes, his sandwiches yes. elsewhere where it's safe. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay, we skip ahead to the end of the week. It's Sunday again. I guess the Mormon higher-ups have come to Yard Church now to tell them who's going to replace the dead guy as their branch president. I guess that he was the like head Mormon in town or whatever. Right. Yeah. And they're like, well, that guy, that guy's being mean. So we have a new character who's president. Is he going to matter to the movie? Nope. Not even a little. Not even a little. I don't think he'll get five lines, but... um. Here he is. Yeah, but he'll mostly exist so that Noah can spend the rest of the movie going, okay, are they trying to make him look dorky or Mormon? I cannot tell. <laughs> I just call him Beanhead or Bean Guy mm -hmm. for okay. the rest of it because he looks so like a lima bean that uh -huh. grew a body and legs. No, I get yeah, it. Yeah, I think he looks like when you take your baby to have like a novelty like photo shoot where they dress it up as like an adult and put adult clothes on and put like a little business <laughs> case yeah. in front of it. That's what he looks like. Right, right. No, exactly. The mall would not do a Mormon costume for us, by the way. I tipped that lady well, <laughs> yeah. and she still said no. Right. Also, just a, a very small thing, but there's another uh, just crunching music cue where he sees Charity, and the music plays this like really shitty song, and the lyrics are, She was beautiful. It was circumstance. 
that's as good as they get. That's the creativity <laughs> level. Like, there was a lady, <laughs> events continued to occur. There were the time dimension continued to move forward. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. Existence continued, yeah. So they, they announced that this guy is going to be their new branch president. I think the character's name is Ian. And the crowd is like, yeah, but what about a fucking church, though, right? You're goddamn Mormonism. You have at least a hundred billion fucking dollars in the bank. How about throwing us up a fucking church? And they're like, you can have a trailer. Right. Church trailer. And the movie is like, ain't it the truth? And I'm like, oh, that fucking sucks. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because they're billionaires. They, You give them yeah. 10% of your money. If you just kept that, you could build a church with it. It's. I can only describe it as like, has anyone ever been like, tried to make an inside joke with you, but actually their life is just sad? They're like, time to get back to the wife. Yuck. Am I right? And you're like, oh, you should get a divorce. That's what they do about their religion <laughs> in this scene. Right. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, this might not seem like an act break, but Mormons getting a trailer kind of is the plot of this movie. So we're going to take a break here, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Baptists at our barbecue. Hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions here to tell you about this week's sponsor, Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton while phone plans start at just $15 a month. Psh, nice try, officer. Eli, what are you talking about? Look, Noah, if I know one thing from my life experience, it's that when you're being offered prices that seem too good to be true, you're talking to a cop. So, yeah, no dice. You hear me? No dice. No, no, Eli, by going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. Smoke some of this phone in front of me right now. Okay, smoke I am, this phone. I am, smoke I'm it. not going to smoke your phone. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Mint Mobile. Price is so good, we might be cops. I understood so little of this sketch. It's a drugs thing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, got it. Right. <laughs> Dr. Bloom, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, it's really wonderful to meet you. My pleasure, gentlemen. How may I help? So it's a bit of a rights question, actually. We're making a film about Baptists and Mormons, you see, and we're hoping we could use your quote about the two groups. Mm, I see, I see. Well, I have, of course, written extensively from my position at Yale about the dangers both face the American populace. I assume this is some kind of drama. Uh, no, uh, not a drama per se. It's it's actually a comedy. Ah, a black comedy. A grim look at the absurdity of religion through the lens of America's foremost theocratic dangers. I see, I see. Uh, more of a romantic comedy, really? Yeah, yeah, romantic comedy. A lot of slow motion shots of a blonde lady. Yes. I see. Gentlemen... Did you read anything I wrote on either side of the quote you want to use to open your movie? We have not, no. No. I see. And how much are you paying? Uh, $22.17. Well, I am a teacher, so I will take it. Our movie's got a sack race. Sack races are fun. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Howard, the douchebag boyfriend who you forgot about, showing up in town at the gas station in his douchebag convertible. It's weird that they chose an actor so much more attractive than the main character, right? It is. <laughs> I want to slice cold cuts with this man's and then eat them off of his face. Yeah, okay. All right. Although his hair does look like it's carved out of wood. Like it's like a blonde kind of mahogany kind of wood that they just carved into the shape of his hair. It looks perfectly solid. At no point does it move. Yeah. So he has got that going against him. Well, I don't know, man. Everything about this guy looks like it was carved out of wood. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, fair. So, and now this is the weirdest fucking, this is such a lazy, stupid ass scene. So he pulls up at the gas station, old slushy guy's out there. Apparently, Tartan's just hanging out with old slushy guy now. That's just what he does with his afternoons. 
Because one of the three slushy guys is dead. And so Tartan's just slipped straight in to oh, Heber's right. old slushy yeah. spot. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He's sure dead. So Howard's like, hey, random person at the gas station, do you know if Charity's home? And we're like, why the fuck would anyone here know who you're <laughs> even talking about? But they're like, no, no, she went into town with her aunt to buy fabric. She'll be gone all day. And he's like, okay. Isn't this town? No. Shut up. <laughs> different, <laughs> different. So he's like, well, that's okay. I have foreseen this as a possibility, and I have written a small a message on a small piece of paper that I've decided to entrust with the first random fucking person I saw in town. Look, I'm trying to save my marriage here, but I have a tea time at 3.23. So I've decided to sort of 50% it. <laughs> So he's he hands the message to to the old slushy guy. He's like, give this to to charity. He's like, sure will. And then he drives off. And then Tartan buys the message from slushy guy and throws it away. Or burns it, I guess. He burns it. Yeah. Yeah. How does this movie not know he's the bad guy? I just he's so obviously the bad guy. The movie will be very confused for the rest of the movie about whether this was a good or a bad action. Yeah, or whether or not it even happened. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. we'll, we'll talk yeah. about it when it happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we cut to Tartan and Charity in the woods together for having the most boring goddamn relationship in the history of cinema. Oh my God. It's Have you ever like gotten somehow stuck on a double date with just a couple of nothings? Yeah. Just two fucking cups of vanilla pudding and you're so desperate for conversation that you're like, how did you meet? And they're like, my friend knew her. Yeah. It's like those people were allowed to make a movie instead of bore you for 20 minutes. Oh, like, <laughs> like, like both of these actors are, are hot, right? But like, I feel like I would fall asleep watching them fuck. They're so Absolutely. goddamn no boring. Question. <laughs> and so she's like, you know, and, and she's going like, yeah, you know, it's, it's so sad, you know, me and Howard were so close for so long, but now, you know, he's he hasn't called, he hasn't written, he hasn't left a note with the slushy guy, nothing. <laughs> and and of course, Tartan's going like, oh, wow. Well, yeah. Gulp. The narrator even cuts in and goes like, mm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder whether it was the right thing to burn that note or not. Yeah, he says in voiceover, like, oh, I start, uh, for some reason, I started to feel guilty about that. Like, yeah, because it was a massive betrayal of trust. Yes. Of course you felt guilty about it. Obviously. And she's like, hey, I made food. Why don't you eat it? And he's like, yeah, you know, this movie hasn't had a scene yet of me eating food and then deciding it's not very good halfway. Well, it hasn't had one in 20 minutes anyway. So, like, let's do that again. Right. But again, it's the craziest way of doing that because she's made a burrito. Now, a burrito, that could be a spicy thing. Maybe it's too spicy for him. It could have too many like raw onions in. Maybe he doesn't like raw onions. No, the problem with this burrito that they're eating in the middle of the woods is that the beans are frozen. <laughs> so that she's she's used frozen beans, hasn't noticed that the beans are still frozen, and then they haven't defrosted at any point during their journey right, to yes. the woods or the subsequent conversation time. And so he has to hide a half-eaten burrito still with absolutely frozen beans wherever he can. It's just a crazy way of doing, I can't eat this thing you've made me. It's just ri ridiculous. Well, and also because they're trying to set up this slapsticky thing where he spits the bean burrito back into this bag of Doritos that he's got or whatever. But he's in the fucking woods. Yes. Right. Like you could you can literally spit anything anywhere. You're in the fucking woods. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. And then again, this is this slapstick is so convoluted. She's like, can I have one of your chips? And he's like, you're holding a bag of chips. And she's like, yes, I am. And all we had to do is not hand me a bag of chips at the beginning of this scene. Or have me have a different kind a different of chip. Flavor. Anything. Yes, absolutely. Anything yeah. from his scene to make sense, but no. Can I try one of those flavored chips? Would work here, but they've got... They're, and the thing is, they're both plain chips as well. They, there's no flavor they're both, to them. They're, they're both plain, plain nacho chips. cheese Doritos. Yes. Yes. She also... And maybe this was me <laughs> desperately trying to infuse meaning into a movie that was more and more by the second becoming a narcotic to me. Does she imply she'll fuck him for a chip? <laughs> there is definitely that implication there. Yeah. I'm not saying she says she'll fuck him for a chip, but there's a, I would have fucked you if you'd given me a chip tone to after he says no. Yep. Too late now. Yeah, there is. There yeah. is. That is true. 
I just, I love, as she's asking for, she's like, can I have one of your chips? And he's like, you have a bag of chips your own. I feel like Heath would break up with her right now. He would leave <laughs> the woods. He'd just be like, I'm done. I'm done. This relationship is obviously not going to work out. <laughs> so. But the thing is, this scene is then over and it doesn't matter. And this is the first time that I put in my notes, every single scene of this film could be removed, should be like cut for time and it would make zero difference to the plot. None of this needed to be in here. Yes. Cut for time rearranged too. You could randomize the scenes in this movie yeah. and it would not change yeah. the plot of this movie. It's like every single scene in this film is like a side quest from the main plot that you can do in any order in the open world game. Yeah, and so right. yeah, You could have done this first or you could have gone away, defeated the bad guy, become super powerful and 40 foot by 10 foot quilt that she makes yes. overnight. And <laughs> yes. the next day, it's just there. And look, that's kind of a bit Right, but this movie's so fucking lazy. They didn't make a quilt to cover the back of a building. It's very clearly like three sheets of cloth hung over the back of this yeah. building because they <laughs> went to the props guy and they were like, "Can you make a big quilt for this visual gag?" And he was like, "Can you fuck yourself?" And they were like, "No, that's fair." <laughs> and doesn't she then like she says she's done? She does the quilt thing, and then she doesn't she basically say along the lines of, "Well, I've got like nothing else in my life, and I'm so sad and lonely that I just made quilts." It's like you just like trampled all over any of the humor in this. Oh, that was so fucking dark. Yeah, it's like, lady, come on, just because you can knit quilts with superhuman speed, we don't need to hear your life story. We don't want to hear your tragedy. <laughs> yeah, she stands up the next day and they're like, oh, well, you know, Sister Lynn took care of us and made this amazing quilt overnight. And she's like, yes, it's because I have no husband and have never known love and never will know love. And then she just starts weeping helplessly. Yeah. And everyone sings a hymn, right? They're like, oh, well, this is this is a fucking bummer. Somebody sing a upbeat yeah, this, song. This is awkward. Quick, come on, drown her out, drown her out. She's weeping too loud. Get a song on the go. <laughs> right. So, and then uh, the Baptists, by the way, as soon as they start singing a hymn, the Baptists start ringing the bells at their church so they don't have to listen to those shitty Mormons with their shitty Mormon stuff. And don't they also like pull up like a siege drawbridge in front of their yeah, church? Yeah, they totally they do. Do. Weird. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Moat situation. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, they, they say, and then the Baptists put a big wall in front of their church so they wouldn't have to look at filthy Mormons. Again, they have horns and lay eggs in this movie. <laughs> so, okay. But then Tartan decides he's got, he's figured out how he's going to solve all this town's problems. They're going to have an interfaith barbecue. Hey, everybody. I was just looking at this front of the script, and this is called Baptist at our barbecue. <laughs> we are 45 minutes in. And yeah, so even though there is act this is actually the least likely point at which we should have an interfaith barbecue, we're going to have an interfaith barbecue. And one lady goes, Baptists at our barbecue? Yeah. Title drop. Nailed it. <laughs> I wanted Samuel Jackson to stand up and be like, hey, little much. Can I just like, make a little much? People know what movie they're watching. Especially seeing she, she says Baptist like it's the N-word. Or, or, or rather, a word she wouldn't use casually in conversation. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So then we get this fucking montage of Tartan and Charity making signs for the town barbecue and hanging them up. Hanging them up all in exactly the same place, like 15 signs on the same wall. Yeah, this what? is a very they efficient use of your time. <laughs> That's not how hanging flyers works. Yeah, every <laughs> time she'll hang a flyer, he'll fly hang a flyer right next to it. And I'll be like, dude, just let her have her fucking glory, you asshole. <laughs> this montage is a hell, right? Because you're like, oh my God, this movie's so boring. Okay, we get it. They hung up flyers together. And then it just goes on. Oh my God. And mm -hmm. on and on. Like, I won't expose you to each beat of it, podcast listener. But truly, by the end of it, I was like, how do I end this? Mo I'm forwarding, like, desperately dragging the little slider photo on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm, it's just still going. There's no fucking way to stop it. And eventually, so this ends, we end eventually on Tartan at the library trying to make small talk with the librarian who's still angry at the Mormons for all their hymn singing. The only scene that I like in the movie, he's like, so how's it? Fuck yourself. Okay. okay. <laughs> he says, you know, I'm really interested in uh, what you and your husband think. And she's like, the only thing you're interested in is leading us into the mists of 
darkness. I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> oh, I hate that I got this reference because she makes the whole great and spacious building. And I was like, I hate yes, that I read that. Part. I hate it. <laughs> she does that twice. She said something one time about having her hand on the rod. And we're like, it's not it's not as exciting as what you think. It's a reference to the fucking <laughs> Book of Mormon. So. No, Marsh, this is from the book. This is the book. The only thing that happens in the most boring part of the worst <laughs> book of the bad <laughs> book. <laughs> so so he has that conversation with her. He goes outside and Shitter Guy runs up to him and he's just pouring fucking sweat. And he's like, hey, man, we just found out that that barbecue you're inviting all the Baptists to, some of the Baptists are going to come. I wanted that lady to stand up again and be like, you mean there's going to be Baptists? I said, <laughs> stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, the stakes are very much that the Baptists might show up to the barbecue they've been invited to. It's 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 amazing. Right. Well, there was this moment when they were trying to sell the congregation on it where he's like, oh, come on. The Baptists aren't going to show up and we'll just look like better people for having invited them. So we'll win at the charity. Is this where they talk about the food at the barbecue as well? And I think he sort of yes. warns. He's like, oh, but uh, Lonnie soaks her beans. And I wrote, okay, that's like definitely a Mormon wanking euphemism, right? Like, <laughs> right. she's not masturbating, and she's just uh, soaking her bean, you know? <laughs> and yeah, right. So he warns that the Baptists are going to have even better beans than the Mormons, and that's going to be problematic. And then Tartan goes to leave the gas station, but not before my best worst shows up. <laughs> Rich, the guy, the drunken guy whose job he stole, is sitting in his truck, and he yells out his window, and I quote, you stupid water drinker. Okay. <laughs> Might as well call him an arm haver, right? Yeah. That's his Mormon insult. You stupid water drinker. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I try to run my scathing atheist headlines through chat GPT and it'll try to replace all my fuck yous with like, I sure am disappointed in the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so sometime later, Tartan and Charity are on the porch being banal. This is where he explains that he thinks God sent her to him because he was a good Mormon. You know, like a trophy, like she's a trophy. Yes. Yeah, he literally is like, I think you were like a gift from God. And she's like, nice. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also says, they're like leaning in and he says, how do you feel right now? And she says, comfortable. Mm. And can I just say, if I was ever about to kiss a woman and I asked how she felt and she said comfortable, I would commit seppuku <laughs> on the spot. Yeah. The dead people from the happening would be like, that guy's fucking committed. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a devastating thing she could do to crush him at that point. She's just like, yeah, you know, just just comfy, really, I guess. Yeah, how do you of... feel? Eh, meh, meh. Non-threatened? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, so then we get a, a a meeting where all the Mormons have gathered up to talk about the dangers of having Baptists at their barbecue. Okay, now I do, I do want to give credit to the only funny, the line that genuinely made me laugh in this movie mm -hmm. is the old lady who's like, they stole our church, I had a dream about it. And they were like, really, what'd you dream? And she goes, I dreamed about a crow. And they're like, and? And she's like, and I don't like mm. crows. That's it. That's, That's it. it, that's the whole bit. Yeah. And I was like, okay, movie, credit where credit's due. That was a fucking yeah. funny scene. But the thing is, right, she, she had a, a dream of a crawl. She thinks it's prophecy. Everyone looks at her like she's crazy, as if that isn't the precise evidentiary standard on which their whole theology <laughs> is based. A person yeah. thinks they had a dream about a thing, then I guess that's true then. Honestly, if Joe Smith had claimed that he was told the Book of Mormon by a crow, it would be less bullshitty than the thing he said. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> and, and we all know the real reason she doesn't like crows. You know, it's nothing to do. She says, oh, oh they stole my tomatoes. It's nothing to do with tomatoes. It's because no. crows are more, you know, cursed than, say, doves. Doves right, are more right. delightsome <laughs> than crows. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a delightsomeness <laughs> issue. Yeah. So yeah, so so Tartan, he's frustrated. He storms out. And wouldn't you know it, librarian lady is there in fucking disguise to like stim over and warn him about the dangers of his interfaith barbecue. Right. And then, then they get in a weird fight about young earth creationism. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yes. Yeah. And you say they get into fight. It's well that she gets in a fight with his truck. Yep. In again, they're trying to do slapstick. They don't know the limits of slapstick. So they have a woman in her like fifties or sixties jump on the front of his truck as he reverses away from her. 
So like he's already doing like 15, 20 miles. That's a hell of a jump. She, yes. And she leaps on him like she's the fucking T-1000. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, yeah, we're getting some full on Terminator 2 shit going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and this, of course, ends with him throwing the 50-year-old woman off of his truck in a speedy turn or whatever and then driving away. Yeah. Yeah. While she yells at him, tartan spelled backwards is Satan. That's what she said. obviously isn't. What it is you not. Know? No. It's Nat Rat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at it right here. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's the day of the barbecue. They're all heading there. Aunt lonely soul quilt maker her truck won't start so they get in her other truck jesus why is this scene uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but the end result of it is that they're in a panel truck right so that like uh charity and tartan are up front and everyone else has to get in the back of a panel truck and that's that the humor now is that they're being bounced around without any seat belts or safety equipment I guess. Yeah. Including the Baptist dog lady. So they've just forgotten that they don't invite the Baptist dog lady to their special Mormon things. So they're supposed mm -hmm. to hate Baptists, but she's, she's been at most of the Mormon meetings by this point. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so, and this is of course where he, ha they have to have the bit where like he tries to tell charity that he burned the note that Howard left, but she interrupts him halfway through so that this can come out in act three instead. And now, Oh my God. Oh, what so a, fucking dumb. What a boring and terrible way to tell your story. Right? So the only resemblance this movie has to a standard romantic comedy is there was a misunderstanding that happened at the beginning of the movie and it will be revealed now and we will be mad at each other. And then we won't be, we love each other. But instead, he goes, hey, I'm going to reveal that thing. And she goes, no, it's OK. I already know. And so there will be no stakes until about four seconds before the ends of the movie, <laughs> yes. where the movie will go like, no, I want those stakes back. I want them. <laughs> It's, I, I really, it's hard to communicate how painful this movie is to watch because the thing about bad drama is you can be like, look how hard they tried. But this is like someone loudly farted and they're like, get it? And you're like, ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, I will say while they're in this truck, like they go over like two heavy speed bumps or like, like, you know, ditches in the road. Yeah. And you see Charity kind of like bounce around in the, in the cab for those two. And then she turns to him and says, I think I'm officially over Howard now. I was like, lady, if you feel that way now, wait until he finds you a cobbled street to drive down. And you're going to think very differently about the world. You know, this virginal Mormon ain't getting in there at all. Yeah. So she's going to take it where she can get it, I guess. Yeah, so, okay, so we get to the barbecue and we have this bit where, again, like, how did you not realize that this is a terrible bit to put in your comedy movie? The bit is this old guy is telling a boring story to our main character, but we're going to listen to the whole boring fucking story. The whole thing. Mm. And, and we're supposed to be amused and entertained just because he, like, barely glances at the camera like pretty boring, right? Yeah, right. Gas station Willie shows up. Now, you'll remember he's a Baptist, so he's a little nervous coming to a Mormon barbecue. Yeah, even though he lives in a town that is literally 50% Mormon, he can't move for bumping into Mormons on a constant basis. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my God. Is this where they say, oh, Willie, it's fine. You should try the pretzel casserole. <laughs> the fucking yep. what? Mm -hmm. Sorry, the fucking what? Is that it? <laughs> Now, is, is this like a whittling soap thing where you guys are going to say to me that that is a thing that actually exists? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretzel casserole is a big thing that exists. That is the most American dish I've ever heard of in my fucking life. I, I deliberately did not Google it because I did not want Google images to inform me what this looked oh, like. The only way You're that could be out. more American if it was it was if it was fried pretzel casserole. <laughs> Deep fried Coho pretzel casserole moon pie ice box. Okay, I've Googled it. It looks fucking revolting. <laughs> yeah, it no, it's pretty. That's it's wow. fucking okay, the Liverpoolian is here telling us what looks revolting, everybody. <laughs> this is how far we've stooped as a country is that the Brits yeah. are like, that looks fucking gross. <laughs> Eat a pan of scouse. Eat a pan of scouse and then tell me it, it's not delicious. That is the Liverpoolian meal. Uh, that's what that's what the scouse is named after. It is a billion times more delicious than I'm this I'm sorry, Marsha, I can't hear you. I'm eating this fresh, juicy apple, which my country bought. I'm just eating this delicious. <laughs> 
<laughs> fresh fruit that my country purchased for me. So yeah, no, that's nice. So so we get this montage of everybody having fun at the picnic, and there's this one shot where the the Baptist chick that that he got the beagle from is playing soccer in high heels. Mm. And I learned I have a kink that I didn't know about in that exact moment. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah, was that yeah, sexy. No, a new tab <laughs> opened on a lot of computers. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the thing is, that, even that aside, she has the best football skills I have ever seen in a religious movie. And she's wearing high heels doing it. It's, yeah. Her, her control is, her touch is excellent. She's got a, a great first oh, touch. Right on. Oh, yeah, excellent. Again, they were like, why wouldn't she be the love interest? And they're like, well, put her in high heels. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, right, oh. right. And this was another of the music cues where the music comes in and this is the the, the, the song that is so yes. like archetypal of this film that they use it over the end credits and the lyrics go now I don't like you you don't like me at least that's one point on which we can agree there must be something we can do I'll tell you one thing let's have a barbecue yes. it's, just, it's describing the plot of the film in two lines it's, 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 it's oh, God, it kills it's me. a real bummer yeah yeah they have a little sack race they, they actually make more, being a Mormon look pretty fucking awesome for that scene, but what we what we also see in the background is Rich, the guy that hates him because he took his job, sneaking around behind the barbecue with a giant gas can. Up to no good here. And I wrote in my notes, okay, if the rest of the movie is just a shot for shot remake of Glory, but with white people, <laughs> oh, I Jesus am Christ. in. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. It looks like something's on the verge of happening, so I feel like we all need a minute to brace ourselves. But first, let me get back through the hard sell. Is Rich going to set the townspeople on fire in a righteous conflagration that ends their false piety and avenges his unwarranted termination? Will their vicious religious tensions follow historical trends and erupt in an orgy of violence and murder? Who will win the talent show? Find out the answers <laughs> to these questions and more when we return for the wacky conclusion of Baptists at our barbecue. No, no. I mean, I'm pretty sure this one's just a cult, so no. Oh, hey, Eli, what you doing there? Oh, I'm just looking through the app store for a fitness app that actually works, you know? Oh, how so? I don't know. When you look on the app store, the ones that are free always have like a weird catch and the paid ones are always some super specific program. I, I just wish there was a fitness app made for me, you know? Well, why don't you try FitBod? What's FitBod? Whatever your fitness level is or whatever your goals are, FitBod builds a dynamic workout plan just for you and optimizes future workouts based on your personal progress. Wow, so no weirdly specific programs? No, indeed, not at all. FitBod's powerful technology understands your strength training ability, studies your past workouts, and adapts to your available gym equipment. It's true. I tried FitBod before they became a sponsor, and I love how they mix up workouts to keep you from getting bored and understand where you are and what kind of workout you want to have that day. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse FitBod. All right, guys, I'm in. Where do I sign up? Wherever you are in your fitness journey, get the most out of every workout with FitBod. Get 20% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. Nice. Hey, Marsh, how do you stay in shape anyway? Oh, me? No, I, I use BritBod. What's, uh, what's that? So I do one squat thrust every year, and I look like this till I'm 80. Wow. What if you did two squat thrusts? I'd die. I see. Yeah, no, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charles, have you got a second? Uh, yeah, we have a, a quick thing. Sure, guys. What's up? So, uh, first of all, just want to say you're doing an amazing job as Rich. Oh, thank you so much. This is such a fun part to play. Like, it's really rewarding. Awesome. Awesome. But we do, we have a note. Oh, of course. I mean, you're the director and the chief camera guy. So how can I help? What's up? Right. So uh, a, a few, and it really is just a few of your improvs have been a little totally inconsistent. Mm, how so? Uh, well, so like in that uh, that last scene, the line in the script after you fell in the mud is, oh, gosh, mm -hmm. right? Right. But you said, I feel as though I've been raped. It's not my body that's broken, but my heart. But my heart. Yeah, yeah hmm. that's what I said. Wait, you see how that like it's slightly inconsistent with the 
slapstick fall into the mud? I do not see that, no. Okay. Um, okay, well, how about this one? In the scene where you fall in the duck pond, your line was, oof. Yeah, and uh, what did I say? You said, I know now that there is no God in heaven because if there was, he'd have been merciful enough to kill me. Enough to kill me. Yeah, I thought that was a really good improv. Look, guys, sorry, I, I don't want to be like rude or interrupt the vision, but if you guys are going to insist on like word perfect consistency with the script, it's, it's going to take the oomph out of my performance. You know, I want I want to be fresh. Um, you know what? Yeah, it, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure most people won't even notice. Okay, are, are you ready to do the shot where you pet the puppy? Oh, yeah, totally ready. Great, great. Alan, are we ready to shoot? Oh, no, yeah, ready to go. Great. And action. Oh, puppy! I love you so deeply, but you'll never heal the wound in my raped heart. Okay, he improvised the word rape again. He sure did. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with the start of the much vaunted Longfellow talent show. I wrote in my notes at this point, I can't say how much I don't want to watch this talent show montage. <laughs> Deep in my bones, I don't want to watch this talent show montage. I know everything that's going to happen in this talent show montage. I've seen it all in my dreams 10,000 times. <laughs> I beg you, God, if you rest in heaven, don't make me watch this talent show montage. But he did. But he doesn't. Yeah, cause, cause, yeah. It was never going to go well because like, this film obviously doesn't know what constitutes talent because <laughs> anybody Clearly. who could recognize me perform a talent would definitionally not be anything to do with this movie. Yeah. This is, this is the, the movie of nobody <laughs> with any talent. So I thought the same thing. So the talent show opens up. It's a little kid doing armpit farts. And I'm like, okay, strong opener. Always a strong opener. <laughs> armpit fart. But, but it goes downhill pretty quickly after that. Yeah. Although important plot point during the talent show, <laughs> Wendy. The, yeah, right. Well, is as important as anyone can be in this movie. But yeah, Wendy, the 18 year old that pedophile apologist mom was trying to set Tartan up with. She's doing her act. She falls down. Willie the Baptist gas station attendant rushes in to rescue her. So they're a couple now. He's claimed her. Yes, which is why, again, he portrayed his character as having the mind of a child. Right, because yeah. this actor's like 32, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so much. He's so much older than her that when he picks her up and it's supposed to be like a, ooh, my hero moment, it much more looks like, oh, look, that adult is carrying that child to yep. safety. Yeah. Yes. Sure yeah. does. It, it definitely does. It definitely does. And the thing is, all she's done is fallen. Like she's she stood up and she falls while dancing. So she's not going to have hurt herself that much. But he immediately picks her up and runs off with her like he's called Bagsy, like he's called Dibs. <laughs> and then he's off. Yeah. <laughs> Ba uh, for the American listeners, Bagsy is the British Dibs. It's the British it is, Dibs. It is the British Dibs. I, I, I was cold switching as I went. <laughs> no, no, it was good. I, I should point out, Brits are hesitant to call Dibs after they did it to India and it turned into a whole thing. So <laughs> <Yes. laughs> they had to call it Bagsy from then on. <laughs> fair, fair. So, so, okay. So, meanwhile, Rich is over at Tartan's place. He was just at the fucking picnic so apparently they're having this in tartan's backyard right so but they aren't having it this is this is no. oh, this annoyed me so much because they're not because we saw them get into a van and drive yes. a long way down a bumpy road to get to the talent show and yet rich is there in a second fucking willie will show up still yeah. carrying the child so he's ran with her for at least four miles while holding her because <laughs> she's because she's got a boo-boo on her knee Right. And Rich carried that gas can the whole way. We should point out that it's about a 330 gallon can that he's carrying. So, OK, so he but he's gotten to Tartan's house and he's going to burn it to the ground. He, he goes inside. Door's not locked. He opens the gas can. Why, why would you lock the door in this town that is riven by religious blood feud? Why would anybody right, yeah, lock right, exactly. door? <laughs> exactly. It would just be unnecessary. So he opens the gas can. But just as he does, Willie shows up with Wendy. So he sets, and this is important, the open gas can in the middle of the fucking room and then just sort of hides behind the door. Yep. Right? I, I point that out because Willie and Wendy will spend like five minutes in this room without noticing 
an open gas can. Yeah, well, you, no, it's the country, and sometimes people have open gas cans. It's like when you're soap whittling and making your pretzel casserole. Sometimes you want an <laughs> open gas can right in front of the TV. Right? No, but you it's want worse. Not because Rich has sloshed the gas around before he puts the can down. We see him sloshed about a bit. So this room is going to stink of gas. Oh it's yeah, gonna have the gas smell. The entire room is going to stink of gas. They're going to be high from the fumes after five minutes in this room. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so they leave. They don't notice the gas can. And then is, I guess it's now Willie's turn at the talent show. He's got a talent. He's going to snort a piece of rope up his nose and pull it out of his mouth. I know the guy who invented that act is a thing I can say at my life is weird. <laughs> That's weird. I, like, I used to do that in high school. I was in high school in the 90s. When did he invent it? He invented it in the 60s. Oh, okay. I, I have <laughs> never seen this done before. I have never seen this done before. Oh. I, mean, I, I, I can understand how it was done. It's not that <laughs> mystifying to me. I can understand some of the, the biology involved. But to be fair, the actor actually did this, which is the, yeah, only, no, no. the only time in any of this that the actor actually performs the talent that, is, that could discernibly be con constituted a talent. That's the only one of the talents that they're doing the thing. I'm sorry, that's the first time. That's the, there's a second time in this movie where a, a, an actor shows some some genuine talent, and that's about to come right the fuck up uh, because it's time for Bob to do a magic show. Eli. Found this very Eli, triggering. Bob is going to do a magic show now. I found this very insulting to my people. <laughs> the audience really love his magic. Like, the, the magic goes down really well with this audience, Eli. I don't know how, like, I don't know, you probably had some all right gigs, but, like, his gig's really, really good. I don't know whether you want to sort of, like, I know sharing sharing tricks is a thing that happens in magic. I don't know whether you want to pick up any <laughs> tips or so. I wanted a Disney warning before this movie. Like this this contains content that might be insulting <laughs> to magicians. <laughs> We've moved on since then. <laughs> yeah, so he does the t terrible like, you know, uncle magic shit, you know, the like, "Oh, I've pulled my thumb off." He does a bunch of that type of stuff for a while. Yeah, my, my notes literally read, fuck me, I do not need a Bob scene right now. And then actually I take that back. I need to be able to watch Eli watch this scene for the first time. That's, that was all that was in my head. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been fun, yeah. So, but we're cutting between his wacky finger magic and Rich dowsing Tartan's house with, with gasoline. Well, it turns out that Shitter Guy was in Tartan's bathroom the whole time. The whole time that he started sloshing gasoline around, the whole time that Willie and Wendy came in and left, the rest of the sloshing gas, he was in the shitter the whole time because that's his thing, right? Being in bathroom so so as not to eat. And when he comes out, we got Rich, like he's lit the match, but he's thinking he's not sure if he really wants to do it. But when he notices the other guy, he gets distracted and accidentally drops the match and sets everything aflame, right? Right. But this is a Pulp Fiction reference, right? Is it? This is John Travolta coming out of the bathroom to find Bruce Willis holding a gun. And then there's the moment where they look at each other and then Bruce Willis shoots him. They've put, this is that I, 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 I will die. I will go to my grave swearing this is a Pulp Fiction reference. This is a, all right. Interesting. A Pulp Fiction deep cut in Baptist at our barbecue. Yeah, okay. I, I, I am relatively certain that the people who made the Mormon vehicle Baptist at our barbecue had not seen Pulp Fiction. That's just, that is my guess, but okay, you believe what you need to believe. I, I think they may have seen a pastiche of Pulp Fiction somewhere. Pulp Fiction was 99, this was 2004. Yeah, no, 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 was it was there. in the middle that they could have uh, could have seen all right, that were all right. up versions. It's a secondary reference, okay. Yeah, there's right. a Simpsons version or something, I'm sure. Oh, there you go. Actually, the, the Mormons aren't allowed to watch the Simpsons. No, they're not allowed to watch There was some sort of semi-clean version that they were allowed not. to watch. Stick to your guns, Marsh. This is an homage to Quentin Tarantino's <laughs> hyper-violent... <laughs> The movie that set the record for the most fucks in a single film. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one step further. I think the child falling down and hurting her leg and, and Willie carrying her to the house... What was cut out there was an extended foot scene. An extended oh, yes. scene of really like massaging her foot, making sure her foot is okay. This is all going Tarantino. I mean, honestly, though, that would make sense out of the the football scene with the uh, Baptist Beagle lady right. earlier, too. Yeah, no, okay, all right, I'm, I'm coming it. around. I'm coming around. <laughs> all right. So, but during the middle of this talent show, everybody noticed this, uh, this column of smoke rising from right around where Tartan's house is. So everybody runs. There's this huge conflagration. Turns out that shitter guy got out in time. He, he you know, jumped out the bathroom window or whatever and didn't 
die in a terrible house fire as we were immediately led to believe. Right. Yeah. And, and Tartan's pretty relaxed about his house being on fire, but in fairness, it wasn't a very nice house. It was not no. a good yeah. place. He's thinking, yeah, this is probably... And it was free, so why the fuck would he care? Right, yeah. It's barely even worth the insurance money at this point. I, I, right. I think I'm finishing net up at this point. It's <laughs> it's as though Tartan is walking through the scenes in the movie in a random order at this point, because he's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know where my emotional stakes are. Like, did I just get here? Is this the end of the movie? I don't really know. But yeah, like it's the time so traveler's wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, to the point where there's like a voiceover that seems to be explaining his lack of acting acumen in retrospect, right? He's like, you know, I really wasn't all that upset about everything that I own being burned to the ground. I'm like, feel like you would have been. Right. Um, he's like, I was really mad because the barbecue ended on such a down note. <laughs> yeah, which is a pretty tough review of Bob's magic hack, to be fair. I mean, it's, it's, it's fair. It is fair, but it's scathing. Yeah, <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> So I guess he's going to stay with Oroville now, right? So we get it like that night. He's pulling back up at his house after doing some shit or whatever. And Rich is waiting for him. And Rich pushes him when he gets out of his truck. But then he gets up and Rich is like, fuck, I didn't think of then you get up. And so he starts running away. Yeah, the, the, his, his plan is foiled. Rich is in such a different movie here. This is like a violent murder attempt. Like, don't get me wrong. These actors don't know fight choreography, but at one point he like sneaks up behind him and tries to bludgeon him to death with a giant yes. branch. Oh yeah, in the chair scene. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Rich is in some kind of horrifying, like, post-hatred, like, thriller. Right. And everyone else is in fucking Baptists at our barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. So, I guess he runs off into the woods. Tartan chases him. Don't worry. The scene's in the dark, so we don't have to see it generally <laughs> <laughs> this i almost went with best worst dark scene because truly this part of the movie is unwatchable and i mean that in the physical sense right no yes. you're you, yeah. you're seeing as much of it as we are listeners <laughs> but it does resolve with this moment where he uses i didn't know mormons had this superpower like they have like spidey senses but mormonism style right he uses his mormon senses to duck under Rich's branch strike by sensing it from behind. Yep. Yeah. And then he comes up and he punches Rich in the gut. Which is the second time we've seen him punch Rich in the gut. So this this time when I saw it, it was like, oh, the old punch in the stomach. Rich is one weakness. Oh, <laughs> right, 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 you yeah, know? Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't see it because he's wearing a shirt, but he actually has a red blinking belly button. So oh, yeah, okay. No, All right. I was yeah. thinking he had the bandage X like in uh, yeah. Mike Tyson's punch out. Yeah. Armor everywhere but the stomach. It's like, okay, yeah, I exactly, get, I get yeah. this is doing. That's fine. Yeah. So, okay. So he punches shitter guy out. Then he goes to walk back, but he realizes he's lost. He doesn't know where he is in the woods. Which is strange because he is 20 seconds from his house. From what yeah. was left of his house. In one direction. 20 seconds in the same direction. <laughs> you can still see your headlights. Your headlights have done that dim but not out thing yet, man. Right. Just walk in that direction. <laughs> and also... You're the goddamn fucking park ranger. Yeah, I your feel entire like... job is knowing how to get around when you're in the fucking woods. You yeah, dumb. He's ranging in a park. No, that's a very good point. Yeah, ranging in a park. <laughs> yes, yeah, it includes some park ranging. Figuring out how far away things are. That is very much what ranging is. How far have I come? <laughs> exactly. How far should I come? What is the range that I have traveled <laughs> <laughs> in this park? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> but of course, this is so we can get back around to the beginning. So as he's walking around lost in the woods, he falls down, slides down a, an embankment and lands in a puddle of mud and then decides that he's just going to sleep there so that we can get him into that covered in mud bit from the opening. Right. right. Which means that the opening of this movie where he was like, you're probably wondering how I ended up here. The answer to that is. I fell into mud. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> was it the low point of the movie? Not really. Was it a turning point for the film? Not at all. No. Mm -mm. I just, this was the scene that we felt was the biggest change between my states physically. <laughs> so this is what we're going to call back to. Yeah, because before that, he's not very muddy. But after that, he's muddy for he's a little very, bit. He's very so, muddy. For very muddy most, for a, a short time. So this is a real the... change for him. <laughs> so yeah, so we catch back up with the mud scene. He, he gets to the road and he's trying to hitch a ride because he's still even in the daylight, doesn't know where the fuck he is. Yeah. But he's still covered in mud. Now, we should point out, he woke up next to a river. 
Right, so he's covered in mud like that by choice. This was a choice that he made to remain this muddy. It was, and he's trying to hit your ride, but he is struggling to hit your lift, and it's probably because he looks brown. You know, this is truly Mormon <laughs> country. So, yeah, they really missed the beat on this. <laughs> well, so yeah, exactly, because my, my first thought was like, dude, I wouldn't let like Marsh into my car if he was that fucking muddy. What do you think? Are you, some strangers going to let you in? But then the cops pull up, lights fucking blaze into sirens, blurred, jump out of their car, gun drawn and then it's like oh they think he's black Jesus oh, it's Christ. a race man also for the record I let Marsh into my car when he has severely contagious childhood diseases so just like if you're ever tracking who is the better friend Marsh I was not enjoy. diseased my wife who I will remind you is a couple of years older than me just in case I need to reach her at that point she was diseased that's right Marsh didn't have diseases. still riddled with a child's disease it felt <laughs> like she still had a child's disease for the record yeah, that you're immune to. But she was not a child whilst having that <laughs> disease. It's important we clarify yeah, that no, given that's the fair. context no, of the rest of the conversation. That's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I'll, I'm checking to see if Marsh is married to a child.com is available. We'll find <laughs> out, Marsh. So, so, Do you really want to incur the wrath of Nicola? Because <laughs> no, you can play with my you know, wrath all you like, but that yeah. will give you Nicola's wrath. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the you. You're sure not going to outwalk her. That's for, yeah, no. She'll chase you into the woods. <laughs> She'll walk across the ocean like Christ. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it follows, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, but ultimately, the cops pull over. There's this long moment where, like, the movie seems to think that human being covered in mud could easily be mistaken for space alien or robot come to destroy. I, mean, I don't even know what they think he would look like other than a guy covered in mud. Right. Correct. Mm. Or, or a brown guy. Cause it, and they keep saying it and it's really uncomfortable that they're saying right. it until I realized that they didn't think he was human. But then I remember that Mormons for a long time didn't think other people were human as well. So yeah, it didn't clarify no, that's, things for uh, me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How like, and that's just the thing is that the movie is not trying to say, oh, well, this town is very racist. And so a dark skinned person would be treated like this by the guy. The, the, the movie is trying to say, well, they can't even tell he's a human because he's got so much mud. How fucking tone deaf do you have to be as a Mormon <laughs> to not realize that this would be taken as a racist statement? Jesus. So anyway, but ultimately Bob gives him a ride over. He's like, I need to go see charity. And we're all like in the audience going like, you don't need a fucking shower. You maybe good would take a shower at this point mm. would be a good idea. But they show up at charity's place and he comes up to her. And he's like, I miss you so much. And we're like, you saw her like last night. Yeah, it's been eight hours, something like that. Yeah. And she says, what happened? He says, it's a long story. It isn't a long story. Nope. It's I ran through the woods for 30 seconds, got lost, tripped, landed in some mud and decided to just go with it for no reason <laughs> at all. That's the entire story. That is the well, story. I mean, it's a long story if you think about the fact that it's been an hour since you said, I bet you're wondering how I got here and then showed us how you got there. But she didn't see that hour. She's in the film as well. Right. She's not watching the movie no. with us. Exactly. But yeah, but they go to kiss and then the, the aunt leans in just then and says, oh, I need you in the kitchen or whatever, which is good because like this, he's still covered in fucking mud. She would be sucking mud if she kissed him. I right. did write in my notes of all the fucking lean-ins they make this poor actress do. Please don't make him kiss him when he's covered in the fucking mud. Right. And they didn't. That was nice. No. So, but we also learn here that the evil librarian lady has decided that she might not be a Mormon anymore. And if she goes to Team Baptist, it's like flipping the Senate or whatever. Right now, the Baptists <laughs> can set the fucking schedule or whatever the hell it is, set the rules or whatever. So she's gone out into the mountains to meditate on this fact, although they don't use the term meditate because that would make it sinful, I guess. Yeah. A Mormon tape. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, she's Mormon tating. <laughs> So and, and now she's done. So the whole town gathers to, dis to find out what she decided in terms of her religion. And this is where Marsha's best worse is introduced. <laughs> she says, I was asking God, should I forgive the Baptist? And the mountains hummed to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I heard a great hum coming from the mountains. And that's I took that to mean that God was pleased. And if you come to the mountains with me, you too will hear the holy hum. Yeah, it's it's the argument from mountains talking, <laughs> well, mountains humming. Right. But she says that when she to hear the hum, she said she'd be on her knees for two hours, 12 minutes. So she's very specific. And mm -hmm. the whole crowd go, oh, and it's like, 
I think it's because there was a book running on how long she'd been kneeling and then most of them had just lost it. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 two hours gonna... five. Come on. Oh, oh way longer than I thought she'd go. I put good <laughs> money on that. Yeah. So now everyone does the like, sorry, wait, is this what the movie's about now? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> right. We made the movie that had the plot Baptists at our barbecue 14 seconds long. So this is what the movie is about now for the next couple mm. of seconds. Will it be the rest of the movie? No. No. no, no, no just for the next couple of minutes. We still have a love interest thing to resolve. We're going to resolve it at the end of this scene. And so everybody, yeah, everybody goes out to the mountains because nobody in this town has a fucking job, apparently. And they're all listening for the hum. And let me say, as a neo-pagan, I've been in this position so many fucking times, right? Where <laughs> like some people start going like, I can hear it. Can you? But it's in that obvious I'm lying way of observing mm. things because like if you actually hear something, you you don't declare I hear it. You just assume everyone else around you also has the same auditory stimulus as you do, right? Yeah, I, I think one of the, the exchange at one point goes, can you hear the humming? And someone says, I think I can hear it. Does it sound like humming? <laughs> yes. yes. Be- because it's because if it's real, it's humming. That's right. That's that would what, be, that that's, would be... that's, and that's what that is. What humming sounds like. But I did think this is classic Mormons because they're saying, "Can I just um, peer pressure you into disbelieving your own senses? Can I yes. just do that for a moment? Is that gonna? That's, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do that. And again, I just want to point out, this is a Christian movie. You made the movie. You can have everyone all at once go. My goodness, there it is. Yeah. But this movie in. A fucking loyalty to every other scene of itself decided to go with, eh, this is fucking eh, the movie. (laughs) It's 70 minutes long. It felt like 900 hours because there's no stakes at any given moment, including during the Christian miracle. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'd go one further. Like, yeah, you can have all of the people say, I can definitely hear the humming. You could go one further. And actually play some fucking humming, so right. we, the, That's the viewers, the see audience it as well. could hear You're the humming. You're allowed to well. do that. You could just do that. They can't stop you. I love to because there's a point where charity is like turned into tartan and going like, "Do you really want to go all the way up to the fucking mountains to hear imaginary humming? That's dumb." And he's like, "No, of course I do. That sounds awesome." What are you talking about? No, no. He he definitely he's just hoping that if he gets her up the mountain, she'll also be on her knees for two hours. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying he's not so much looking for a hum as a hummer. That's what he's at. <laughs> Where there's a hum, you know. Uh, so. <laughs> so. Yeah, but then but some people hear the hum. Some of them don't. Tartan, as the narrator, cuts in and he's like, you know, I don't think it really matters if there was a hum as long as everybody's getting along. And I'm like, well, there's the entire problem with religion in America. Right the fuck there, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're doing jingly keys, but they're not even doing the jingly keys. They're just telling you there are some keys jingling somewhere. You don't hear that oh, jingle? I believe that. I hear yeah. a jingle. Do you guys hear a jingle? So, yeah. And then the librarian comes up and she apologizes for hitting Tartan with her purse. <laughs> it's just, I guess the more I'm sorry I went t- full Terminator 2 on you. I think we were going for a comedy beat, but everything in this movie is like pressing your face against a beige wall for your whole life. So I don't really know. <laughs> That's on me. All right. So now, all right, the whole town's getting along and they decide to have themselves, the Baptists, take down their anti-Mormon wall and everything. And they decide to have an interfaith picnic. Yes, in the movie about an interfaith barbecue, we're going to end on an interfaith picnic as well. (laughs) So so we get Tartan. He finds this. I, I don't know what's supposed to be in this envelope. Did you guys catch that? It was a letter from Rich. Oh, was it? I really hoped it would be the other half of Chapel. I thought, okay, we need to, we need to tie that <laughs> point up. So Rich is like, okay, yeah, I stole it and I'm returning the half and of he Chapel. He just unfolds it and unfolds it and unfolds <laughs> yeah. it. Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So yeah, and then he hears a weird humming out in the mountains. Oh. And he goes out to check it out, which is his fucking job. It's nice to find, finally see him do his goddamn fucking job. But it turns out that it's not a humming, it's very clearly a man moaning in pain. Either or in pain pleasure. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a noisy <laughs> climax. He's like, is that is that a guy coming for like a really long time? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. That's some hotel sex that's happening right there. <laughs> right, right, yeah. 
So I checked on this because this doesn't make any sense. So the listener who recommended this most recently, I was like, hey, have you read this book? And he was like, it was the only book I was allowed as a kid. (laughs) So in the book, Rich throws himself into this cabin to kill himself because he thinks he burned bathroom guy. Yes. But this movie was like, we're not going to say the K word. So he's just... In a chasm. Mm. And it seems as though maybe he fell and then this letter he found spontaneously generated itself into his fucking mailbox. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Right. What's supposed to be happening in this story is that he got a a letter saying, I'm so sorry for burning your house and killing your friend who was in the bathroom at that time. I've gone to kill myself in such and such a chasm or whatever. And yeah. Tartan is going to check on that, but what because this movie doesn't have the guts to make the character suicidal, he just left a letter saying, I'm going to go wander around a chasm. I hope I'm okay in the end. <laughs> Again, this is only making sense to me now. Uh, that the yeah. envelope... For, uh, the best that I had was that the envelope had the location of the, of the the chapel in it, and it was a long time until we found out that that was not the case. So yeah, nope. thank you for, for tying this knot for me. All right. So yeah, so so but Rich rescues him and he tells him that that shitter guy didn't die. He's like, no, you didn't kill that guy. He actually made it out the window. And he's like, wow, so this movie has no stakes at all. And he's like, no stakes at all, really, honestly. I mean, the Howard thing, but we really kind of resolved that off camera. I just realized in my notes, I, as a joke written, I guess Rich must have written, help, I'm about to fall into a big hole in an envelope and post it to him. <laughs> and I've forgotten that I'd written that. There you <laughs> go. That was actually it. That's the take this movie must have. Amazing. <laughs> But this is also, yeah, but Rich admits at this point that it's him that stole the other half of their church. We find out that he doesn't remember where he put it, though, because Mm -mm. during the fall, he lost that part of his memory. Fuck you, movie. Fuck you. Don't have him say it then. Don't have him say it. He sold it to someone and then we never recovered it. How lazy is the writing in this movie? He might as well go, yeah, it turns out Rich stole the other half of the church, but boof, 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 boof. Note to self, write something here later for the movie Baptist at our barbecue. Also, milk, eggs, bread, pen dispensers. And I was going so crazy watching this that I started to tie up plot points because the movie wasn't gonna. So I couldn't help myself writing a better movie. Because I was saying, okay, so like, Rich, I think he said, I might have been here as long as last night. And I thought, oh my God, was he the humming? Him mourning in agony was yes. the humming. I, I assume that is what they were going. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Yes, that is absolutely Oh what my God, going that is for. genuinely the goal. Because they don't say that. No, they don't. They're, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they, they, they want to leave that sort of, but or or maybe God was speaking through a mountain hum. They want to leave that hanging, I guess. I wrote in my notes in block capitals, if it is that, I swear to fucking God, I'm going to throw myself into a fucking rock chasm. <laughs> I think it is. But it was that. Jesus Christ. So so we, we go to the picnic now and Tartan's mom is here because it's the end of the movie, right? He's like, what are you doing here? She's like, it's the end of the movie. And this is my last chance to be in it again. This is where mom meets Charity. He's like, mom, I think I've met the woman I'm going to marry. And she's like, great. And she introduces it. And mom's like, I hear you're getting married. And he's like, I haven't told her that. Yeah, I haven't told her she's marrying me yet. Yeah, <laughs> he's saying it to his mom in this in a sort of way, like, yeah, you know that. Um, just that time seeing Rich half dead in a cave, it really made me feel like I needed to get to second with charity. So, uh, that's, <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> but so I, I thought the movie was wrapping up here. There's 14 seconds left in the film, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh god, I hated watching this movie. It was so not funny. I have no jokes. What a hellscape. Finally, it's over. And then Howard shows up and is like, did you get my note? I scream. I'm not kidding. I screamed no. I was so worried. I thought I woke my baby because I was just like, no, I can't watch any more beats. And I, I honestly almost just like put my notes into cursive being like, dearest gentlemen, please inform me what happens in the rest of the film. I cannot participate. Elizabeth Bosnick. Yeah, like the, the rest of your notes just became your will and testament. Just, yeah, okay, right, this was one right. too far. This got too far, yeah. There are four minutes left in this movie and she leaves him. <laughs> she does. Right? Howard pulls up and he's like, hey, didn't you get the handwritten note that I gave to the first slushy sidewalk salesman? I thought, how could you have not gotten that? <laughs> and and he's like, Tartan was right there. That guy was there when I gave it to him. And she's like, you didn't tell me. And he's like, well, I tried to, but you interrupted me. She says, I'm leaving and marrying Howard now. And he's like, wow, that was 
It's quick. Fast. We, we, we only yeah. have four minutes left of the movie or what? <laughs> and we find out that the reason she interrupted when she said, oh yeah, I already know, is because what she already knew was that he was only putting the barbecue on for her. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is a psychotic conclusion. Like, look, I know you want to feel comfortable in this town, so I'm going to put on a talent show and invite the warring religious factions to compete with one another for you, to make yes. you feel comfortable here. That is, that is what you thought was happening here, Charity. Yes, but she is furious at him for not finishing the sentence she interrupted, I guess. So she leaves. In fairness, Nicola gets that way with me all the time. So I get it. I do get it. Fair. Okay. So she leaves and and he's like, he turns to Bob the cop and he's like, hey man, um, we've got three goddamn minutes to resolve this. Can I borrow your car? Because I don't think I can do this without lights and sirens. And Bob says no. <laughs> he does. He well, he says, "Well, you, I could only only if I deputize you." And I'm, and we're like, "Oh wow, is he going to deputize him?" Spoiler alert: No, he's not. No, nope. he's <laughs> not going to deputize. He says that and then doesn't do it. The mom, fucking Tartan's mom, comes and she goes, "Oh, Bob, can you deputize me?" I'm like, "Wow, is 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 mom going to fuck Bob?" Spoiler alert: Mom's going to fuck Bob. Mom's Absolutely. fucking Bob. Why not? We're just we're just randomly connecting characters via crayon at this point. Yes, <laughs> right. No, I mean I be, I'm gonna be honest with you. After watching his magic show, I want to watch Bob fuck somebody. I mean, I would be up for that. So <laughs> we know he's got magic fingers. I don't yes. blame her. I don't yeah. blame her. We've established that exactly. So okay. So but but Bob's like, no, you can't drive my car, but I'll drive you to go chase the girl that just voluntarily left you. So the three of them, Bob, Mom, and Tartan. I'll drive off looking for her. And I have it in all caps, in italics, and bolded in my fucking notes. <laughs> Why did nobody clean the smear of bird shit off the passenger's window before they shot this fucking scene? I was ripping my eyes out by the end of it. It's a metaphor for the writing in this scene. <laughs> Do you know what? I saw it and I was so bemused by it that I'd convinced myself there had been a previous scene with the cop car being like attacked in some way and that it was a crack on the window. I'd, I'd written that in canonically <laughs> in my head just to try and explain why the window was so fucked up. <laughs> so, so yeah, so they're driving around. Tartan is flashing back to earlier in the movie, which is the fat lady singing of Christian movies, right? Including, it's, it's all the times he's seen her including the time he drew her as a stick person. Yes. Why the fuck would he be reminiscing about the time he drew her as a stick person? It is literally, again, I'm not going to put you through it, podcast listener, but I want to be clear. It is every single shot of her in the movie. Yep. Every single time she is on camera in the movie, we now see in montage. Yep. <laughs> including a montage. We see montages within the montage. Right. It's montage. We see the shots from the montage. Yes. We do. We do. So, okay. So then we cut to Howard and Charity. Uh, they've, they've pulled over the car. She wants to talk to him about something very important. She's realized that they don't have time to resolve a whole nother fucking conflict. There's only like two minutes left in the movie. So she wants to tell him that it's over between the two of them. She just needed to drive off dramatically for act three purposes, but she's not really actually interested in being with him anymore. And he's like, well, that's a very weird turn of events, isn't it? Yeah. He literally says, he goes, I, I'm already all the way out here. And she was like, <laughs> Yeah, no, it was because there was 14 seconds left in the movie and we had squeezed every bit of juice out of every character except this one plot point that we had kind of closed the door on, but we just hit 70 minutes. Thank you, Amazon money. All <laughs> yes, right, right, right. yeah. yeah uh -huh. but Howard, I'm leaving you, but I really need, to, really need to leave you like 15 to 20 miles out of town, so it's really inconvenient for me to get back. Yes. So that's why we're having this conversation here. <laughs> right. So and and then fucking Bob gets a call on his cop radio that they found charity. The goddamn call, I shit you not, is the virtue is intact. Mmm, it is. Yes. Hey, yeah, Bob. Uh, just to confirm, she is back and she does not appear to have been penetrated. So we're all yes, good to go. We're right. all good to go. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But she's back at the picnic, so they they literally could have just stayed there. This served no purpose whatsoever. And then he asks her to marry him in front of the whole town because he's a dick. That's a dick move at this point. You don't even know what she's going to say. <laughs> don't be an asshole. Don't put her on the spot like that. And then all the Baptists and Mormons get to get along. We, we cut to fucking four months later so that we can see them all singing Christmas carols together. Oh, my God. Uh, 
I hated the fact that it was Christmas. This movie is throwing away Breakfast Club clothes for its characters. Like, Heath has to take a diuretic shit and is trying to get off the record. Rich is doing some other thing. Who cares? They're singing carols to someone. I don't know. And then we always blah, 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 blah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, and then, and, and, and Marsh, fuck you for pointing this out before I wrote my notes. And so I had to like actually watch it. There's a post credit scene. There is. There's a fucking post credit scene. Oh, God. And it's useless by the standard for <laughs> scenes that this movie has achieved to this point, right? It's mom <laughs> and Bob. They're on a beach together. He picks up his shell and he goes, huh? And then they wander off. <laughs> That's it. That is literally it. It's amazing. I mean, as they back away, there's like a shot you could like in the beach sand, you can see what looks like, I don't know, maybe the corner of a tractor trailer in the sand and, and a chair. So maybe they were going for like a Planet of the Apes thing that I didn't get <laughs> or something. What, like the other half of the chapel was there? Like Rich took it away and buried it at sea. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Maybe I think that might actually have been what they were going for. Jesus Christ, that just occurred to me. All right. Oh, God. All right. Well, you know what, Marsh? Now we we made sense of so much shit for you. You made sense for so, uh, of something for me at the end, and now I get it. All right. I'm, I'm, that that makes me happy. Well, Marsh, I am happy that we could make America even weirder in your estimation. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh no, you are truly the pretzel casserole of countries. I'm glad to find that out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> new war. We're doing a new war. All right. And by the way, if our listeners wanted to, let's say, come see you in Manchester on September 23rd and 24th for the single best conference in all of skepticism, where should they go for their tickets? Oh, they should head over right now to qedcon.org slash tickets. Uh, prices are absurdly reasonable at £149. We've got so many great speakers lined up. We've just announced our evening entertainment, which is fantastic. The lineup is great. It's just, it's going to be a, an amazing weekend and everybody should come. Absolutely. We will be there. You'll be there. So some of us will be there. Yeah. Yes, because we might not be booked, but we're also not banned. So we will yeah, be right, there. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, we're somewhere in between. <laughs> and well, that's going to do it for our review of Baptist and our barbecue. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to step into the same puddle next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching the spectacularly sexist nightmare that is 2002's Charlie. Oh, awesome. IMDb thought I might like that one if I liked this one. So, okay. With that to look forward to, I guess we're going to bring episode 412 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh and perhaps even a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to every version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the Scanning the Citation, the DD minus, and the Skype Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robert and takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by writers like Josh on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. A week later, the librarian convinced herself she could hear the river whispering, and now the whole town's Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> Bob would go on to fuck the Mormonism right out of Tartan's mind. One time, my brother broke his leg on the seesaw. <laughs> That's what it was like watching this movie. It everybody. was. Sorry, I just wanted you to have nope, one I last experience. What I went through. <laughs> I hated this movie. We went <laughs> Just sent all your fat people over on the Mayflower. Is what you I absolutely did. <laughs> yeah, we just, just it was a, it was actually a eugenics program just disguised oh, as a rebellion. No. That's what it was. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it was an intentional was one or not can be debated. Can but yeah. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.